Well, for about 15 years now, we've been able to measure brain activity with brain imaging. Through our machine learning methods, we've been able to interpret what that hot spot of information is, what the underlying information is in the various parts of the brain. What we're doing is trying to tie the biology of the brain, the neural activity, to the ideas that we're thinking about. So Justin is now being shown these uh, word image pairs. There are a total of eight distinct ones, and each one is going to be shown three times. And that'll be the data uh, that we'll be using. And the only information it'll have to go on is the brain image. So from his brain image for these new words, it'll have to identify which one it is. Now that we've collected the images from uh, Justin's brain while he was thinking about these eight words, um, we've asked the computer algorithm to look at the brain imaging data that we've collected and tell us which word was which. The word was chisel. My first guess is chisel. So it got chisel on the first guess. So in the next experiment, what we're doing is uh, we're going to take a classifier that was not trained using data from Justin. Instead, it was trained using data from other people. And we're going to determine whether that classifier, which has never seen data from Justin's brain before, can successfully determine uh, which word that he's looking at. So the first word we've asked it to say was the word I or was it closet? I think the word is I. OK, so it was correct. It got it. So it's based entirely on other people's uh, brain activation. I think the word is apartment. I that's think that's ten. it got on 10 out of 10 in a, in a two choice test, it got a perfect score. Now what this shows is that other people represented these 10 items rather similarly to the way that Justin did. It means that all of us, to some extent, when we think of a chair or an apple or a hammer or any physical object, very similar things are happening to our brain. That was never known before. That's a, that's a result that was published for the very first time. Fifteen years ago, we didn't have the brain imaging technology for doing this. Fifteen years ago, we didn't have the machine learning technology for doing this. Putting these together and uh, being able to really see, capture the data to see the patterns of activation, and then have the computational models to make sense of them, it's really a new thing in, in the history of the study of this question over centuries. It's not an accident that this occurred at Carnegie Mellon. We're not at a medical school, but we have the techniques, the theories, the methods, to get at brain function, to discover what it is, to think like a human being, to have ideas, to generate new ones. And this science fiction kind of world is just going to keep rolling forward, and we're going to have new and better knowledge about how our own minds work.